60 seconds. So the other day, we're all sitting around in the lunchroom, right? And Tootie comes walking in, and she is Raul, pissed. babe, give me some names. Yo! I and mm, Yeah, hi, Raul here. How many people do we have playing in this game today here, today now? Playing by yourself. Well, how fortunate for us. Apparently, there's nothing good on cake. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you want a seven-question tournament-length game or a full 21-question full? All right, got it. No problem. 30 seconds. Okay, your buzzer is B, as in Bonanza. Yeah. Right, right. Get that on the 20 disc? seconds. This is a studio, not a, not a oh, pack, I don't really remember. I think it was... Oh, man, I can't believe we're at 20 already. Hey, uh, when you know an answer, buzz in. If you don't, don't. But if you buzz, you only got a few seconds to pick one of the choices or you're going to lose cash, all right? 10 seconds. We'll see you later. 9, so eight, we're trying to put on a show. 7, here. Really okay, six, here one, we go. Five, Here's the death count. Thanks, Psychic like Enemies. Okay. 2,900 enemies. With enemies like these, you'll never have friends again. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Yeah, welcome to You Don't Know Jack TV, my friend. Just me and you tonight, how nice for us. What do you say you squeeze in nice and close? We'll take the phone off the hook. Maybe I'll even rub your feet later. You all by yourself today? Don't worry about it. You imagine me right there next to you, mocking you. Okay, let's rock. Give me a category. And now, climbing up the charts all the way to number one. Shake hands with Be All That You Can Beeb. $3,000 for this one. You know what's really nice? On the Andy Griffith Show, when Aunt B gives Andy a little advice. I know I learn a lot. How about you? Imagine an episode where Andy Taylor seeks advice from Auntie Beeb. From what source would Andy get a little homespun common sense? A British TV network, a cable scrambler, a test... That's not it. Why didn't you pick this one? Auntie Beeb is a loving British nickname for the BBC, so Andy would be getting wisdom courtesy of the British Broadcasting Corporation. Of course, if Auntie Beeb offers Andy any of her British food, Andy might regret being the sheriff without a gun. Because, you see, British food is notoriously bad, and you might want to shoot yourself before you had to eat any of it. Just wanted to clear that up. Did I tell you we're coming out with a UK version of the game? Throw me a category. We're calling this one Top 10 Ways to Get There From Here. I got $2,000, says you don't know this one. All righty. The next question comes straight to us from our home office in Chicago, Illinois. Let's see if you can complete the following David Letterman sequence. Oneonta, New York, blank, blank, Wahoo, Nebraska. What towns complete the sequence? Boise, Idaho, and Dover, Delaware. Re Dave's last NBC home office was Oneonta, New York, and his first three CBS home offices were, in order, Sioux City, Grand Rapids, and Wahoo, Nebraska. <laughs> Wahoo, Nebraska. Kind of like saying, yippee, Wyoming, isn't it? All right, pick a category. This is question three. The category? I want Charles in charge of me. You get this one, you pocket 2,000 bucks. So did you know that the show Charles in Charge was canceled by CBS in 1985 only to resume new episodes as a syndicated show from 87 to 90? Come on, why would I lie to you? If you were to explain the plot line of Charles in Charge in terms of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, what would you say? When Charles in Charge returned in syndication, the Pembrokes had moved out and the Powells had moved in. <laughs> Goldilocks was sleeping in his bed. Oh, yeah. Category, please. Hey. The category is TV that gives you that mmm, tingly feeling. You get it right, you get 2K. Okay, you know how the big thing now is that these companies are using classic TV in their advertising? Well, imagine this. Say a toothpaste maker wants to use the phrase, smiles, everyone. 
In the opening scenes of Fantasy Island, Mr. Rourke always says to his staff, Smiles, everyone. Smiles. <laughs> yeah, Ricardo Montalban and smiles go hand in hand. I mean, try not smiling when saying rich Corinthian leather. <laughs> See what I mean? All right, I need a category. Let's take a look at what is that smell? You give me a right answer, I'll give you 3,000 bucks. Put your head between your knees, because we're going down. If you were to brown nose, a TV character named Brown Shoe, up whose butt would your nose be shoved? A hard-working factory worker, a handsome school teacher, a lovable... Ten Speed and Brown Shoe was a short-lived 1980 detective series, so your nose would be firmly planted in a detective's butt. <laughs> or if you'd rather, you can sniff the seat of a Ten Speed. Same difference. Time to pick a category. All right, don't freak out of me or nothing, but you're about to jump headfirst into a dis or dad. The category for this this or that is pop quiz. All right, here it is. I'm going to name off seven celebrities. Well, someone's done this before. Here's your 30 seconds. And we're off. Michael Jackson, Coca Pepsi. Max Headroom. Mean Joe Green. Cindy Crawford. Bill Cosby. Michael J. Fox. One more, Joe Montana. That's all she wrote. In case you didn't notice, that's a perfect score. Here's some cash for you. There you go. Next time, you All right, let's get it. Throw me a category. Question seven is dedicated to the men and women of trivia. Well, what do we have here? When it rains, it Rains. You get this one right, you get 3,000 greenbacks. Okay, free your mind. If weatherman Willard Scott spiced up his weather forecasts by incorporating elements from one of his earlier jobs, what might he do? Box 100-year-old women. Interpret the weather through death. Before he was a weatherman, Willard Scott was the first Ronald McDonald. Yeah. <laughs> and ironically, he wore a skin cap to look as bald as Bozo and a toupee to look as hairy as a weatherman. All right, pick a category. Coming at you. Quit your griffin. How does $2,000 sound? All right, listen up. If you played You Don't Know Jack, Volume 1, you better remember that a griffin is a mythical beast with the head of an eagle and the body of a lion. If game show producer Merv Griffin's body were made up of the hosts of his two most successful game shows, what would this particular griffin Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune are Merv's most successful game shows, so the Griffin would be made up of Alex and Pat. <laughs> Which is really the best of both worlds. This way you retain the pretentiousness of Alex Trebek's head while still being able to experience the pert insouciance of Sajak's body. Give me a category. Let's see what we got going. Fictional viewer mail from non-fictional viewers. 2,000 bucks for a correct answer. Okay, imagine this letter ending up in David Letterman's viewer mail segment. July 31, 1997. Dear Dave, I finally saw The Late Shift. It does not do you justice. I would like to do a true documentary about the late night wars. If PBS can commit 30 hours to the Civil War in baseball, there's no telling how much time they would give me for you. Which Damn, you must be in some kind of big... Uh, all right, how did you do that? That's completely weird. There's no possible way you could have known the answer. You're creeping me out, man. It's totally spooky. Just don't touch me. Oh. <laughs> Time to pick a kick. The following is a test of question 10. This is only a test. May I introduce, they call me Mr. Daryl. Get this one right, you get a grand. Here's the question. Suppose Daryl and Daryl open a school of public speaking. If they start, the Daryl speak one time and one time only. They shout quiet because their wives are arguing. 
Actually, Daryl wants to become a marriage counselor, but Daryl really wants to teach. Now, if this were a TV show, this is where you get up and use the bathroom, but I'm in kind of a hurry, so let's move right into round two. Now, in round two, every question is worth twice as... Category, please. Eleven! Eleven, come on, girl! Good question! Here we have, I think JR did it. Sit up straight, this one's gonna be worth $6,000. One question coming right up. Who killed Laura Palmer? Bob, a demonic supernatural entity, her father Leela. In the trivia biz, we call this a trick question. On the show Twin Peaks, Laura Palmer is killed by her father, Leland, who was at the time possessed by Bob, the supernatural demonic presence. <laughs> so, if you thought your dad was a hard ass, get over it. All right, I need a category. Today's specialties include perks for Perkins. 4K coming your way for a right answer. Hey, did you ever wonder if people on TV shows get perks from their sponsors? Like, does Bob Hope get to fill up for free at any Texaco? If Jim Fowler, Marlon Perkins' sidekick in the field on Wild Kingdom, received a benefit from the sponsor of Wild Kingdom, what would it most likely be? Vehicles to outrun mauling lions, habitats for the lions that maul him, fur coats made from the lions that maul him, or insurance against being mauled by lions. Damn, Key must have slipped. Uh, does this ring a bell? <laughs> the sponsor of the nature program Wild Kingdom was Mutual of Omaha, an insurance company. Look out! The lions are coming! Relax, I've got insurance up the... Yeah! <laughs> Give me a category. Flash! We interrupt this game to bring you a special question. And our special guest tonight, IP Freely. How does $4,000 grab you? All right, what's with the crank phone calls? Somebody keeps calling here wanting to talk to Hugh Jass. My name is Josh Schmitzenstein, not Hugh Jass. Anyway, instead of Prince Albert in a can, imagine a crank caller asks for Frank Pembleton in the box. To where should this call be directed? The police office from Homicide. Hey, that's incredible. I can't believe it. I told them that no one would be dumb enough to pick this one, but you did. Wow, you are amazing. Well, that'll make an exciting story, won't it? Detective Frank Pembleton can be found interrogating suspects in the box on homicide. So, they better let Frank out because I hear his refrigerator is running. Go, wait, no, darn it. Always miss that up. Throw me a category. Hey, stress cut with lime sore. It is time for Your gibberish category for today is frat boy logic. Let's see how much of ten thousand dollars you can win on this gibberish question. Now, as soon as you know the answer, you buzz in and start typing, because I'm going to take away some of that cash every second and a half. All right then, tell me what does this rhyme with? Keg flow dry, keg low, and ignore that punctuation. First clue, it's a commercial catchphrase. It's a catchphrase involving people battling. Come on, start typing it. Okay, so were all the people in those commercials really dumb or just huge liars? I mean, how hard can it be to remember who put a damn waffle in the toaster? All right, pick a category. The thrill of answering. <laughs> the agony of 15. All right, give it up for Johnny and Ed, the early years. If you know this one, you're getting 4,000 bucks. Ready? Catch this. If Ed McMahon and Johnny Carson were reminiscing about the game show they first hosted together, what would Ed... Ed Johnny Carson and Ed McMahon co-hosted the game show, Who Do You Trust? <laughs> and Johnny used to trust Ed until he started pulling all that you've just won a million dollars crap. Time to pick a category.
for your enjoyment. Hi, Bob. You get it right, I'm putting you up $2,000. Okay, now I want you to concentrate and tell me the answer to this analogy. Frank Bartles is to Ed James as Larry from Newhart is to... Frank Bartles always speaks for his silent partner, Ed, and Larry on Newhart always speaks for his brother, Daryl, and his other brother, uh, Daryl. <laughs> And I think I speak for all of them when I say that wine coolers are for sissies. Category, please. For your viewing pleasure, trap on, trap off, the trapper. 4,000 big ones for a right answer here. Oh, nuts. There's a medical emergency on Trapper John M.D. And Trapper can't find his partner anywhere. If the TV character with the same name as Trapper John's partner filled in for him, what would a semi-conscious patient see during the surgery? A cute furry gremlin in surgical scrubs. A clown sewing up. Trapper John works with a doctor named Gonzo. A Muppet doing surgery. Oh man, I can smell the male practice suit from here. Alright, I need a category. Open wide and get ready for when you need credit fast. I'll give you 4,000 clams for this bad boy. Okay, you know how some credit cards ask you for your mother's maiden name for like a security check when you call them? Well, if little Ricky from I Love Lucy applies for a credit card later in life and has to give his mother's maiden name on the application, what will he write? Arnez. Lucy Ricardo's maiden name is McGillicuddy. You know, I'm sorry, but what the hell is that anyway? They're giving credit cards to TV characters? I can't even get a Blockbuster rental card. Give me a category. I believe this one is called The Long Charm of the Law. Heads up, this one's going to be 6,000 bucks. Not that you've had any trouble with the police, but you do know that the motto of many police departments is to protect and serve. If serve meant the same thing as it does in the Twilight Zone episode to serve man, what would the cops do when you called 911? Speed. No, no, stop feeding me grapes and fanning me. I'll go mad. Okay, I'll take the grapes. <laughs> I could have given you some cash if you picked this one. So we In this Twilight Zone episode, aliens arrive on Earth bearing a book called To Serve Man. Earthlings are thrilled until somebody figures out that it's a cookbook. So then when you get arrested, they wouldn't frisk you. They tenderize you. All right, pick a category. Question 20 now concludes its broadcast day. This one's called, I Want Candy. You get a right answer, you're walking away with four grand. Get the wax out of your ears, it's question time. Let's say the Emmy Awards Committee creates a new award called the Yummy for an outstanding candy in a cartoon series. Which of the following... Those chewy little medieval bears could snag a yummy for their show called Disney's Adventures of the Gummy Bears. <laughs> Now, what kind of adventures are we talking about here anyway? Like, uh, one day the gummy bears are left in a hot car and they melt? Oh, yeah, baby. That's great TV right there, huh? Throw me a category. You've a little edgy, aren't we? I thought someone switched to decaf. Here, try this clue. It's mine, I tell ya. Good luck, you're gonna need it.
like I always say, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose as long as you get to play with yourself. Now get the hell away from the computer, will ya? Because... You don't know Jack! Very nice work, people. Let's get those commercials going. Raul, hon, we doing this again? Right, player, number one on the high scoreboard. See, you don't need competition to prove yourself, right? Hey, if you want to play again, let me know and I'll get you all set.